Welcome back to the studio. If you're new, I am slew when I got this new sword. It's really heavy, really sharp, really wonderful. But today we are drawing some epic plaster casts that my new friend made, Justin Kendall. Justin is an amazing sculptor, really awesome guy. He has an epic studio here in Brooklyn where his personal work and business all goes down. So let's check it out. Hey guys, uh, my name is Justin Kendall. I'm a sculptor here in Bushwick and this is my studio. Besides uh, sculpting my own work, I started a business called the Fountainhead Chipsoteca. It's a plaster cast business where I make sculpture reproductions available to art students, art schools, and collectors. So this is where I do all that work. So yeah, these are some of the collection represented here. Um, and the main reason I started this business is there's so much expansion in the atelier, kind of academic art world with online classes, more schools cropping up uh seemingly every every month and these casts are really hard to find and often prohibitively expensive when you do uh so it was my goal to try to make them affordable. Basically, once I found out about Justin and his work, I wanted to learn all I could about it because it's really, really awesome and something that I'm really into. And after that first meeting at his studio, you know, it was so awesome. We really kicked it off. I invited him back to my studio, obviously, to do a podcast, to, ju to just talk about what we talked about in his studio, more on a setting to record it for other people because I think a lot of people would be really interested. So that podcast is live right now on the Slooniverse YouTube channel, also on Apple and Spotify, anywhere you can listen to podcasts. Also, you have to go check out Justin's website, Fountainhead Gypsoteca. You're not gonna find higher fidelity, epic quality head busts in plaster for better prices. If you're a student, an academy, school, anyone, definitely go check them out. I talked to Justin, he's nice enough, giving you 10% off if you use code SLU at checkout. I think that was pretty cool of him, so go, go take a gander. And now the drawing section of the video begins. Let us begin. So I bought two busts off Justin. I got Emperor Kalakala and Saint Benedict. These are actually aqua resin, which is different from what he normally sculpts with. He usually uses plaster, which is a little cheaper. Um, I think aqua resin is, they're a little more structurally sound, but they're heavier, so they're harder to ship, a little more expensive. And we are going to take pictures of them for reference to draw in this video. I'm so excited. He also gave me Robin Williams, a, a plaster cast of Robin Williams for free because he's the homie, and it's very, very crazy. This was a latex cast of Robin Williams, so of his actual face and he got sort of the mold for that so it's all of his pores and everything if you can see it's kind of crazy but robin now lives here what a genius and legend he is emperor caracalla is kind of looking to his left so i want to light him with the dominant side this light above me is too bright this is just for the shot so this is now what we're rocking with and it's really beautiful and i think it's going to be i think it's going to be wonderful so i'm going to take some pictures so I'm just taking some simple pictures with my GH5. So I'm gonna go to the side a little, a little three quarter view, go a little below him to make him look more epic. We'll see what I finally go with to draw. All right, and now for Saint Benedict. We wanna turn this way down. Subtlety is our friend. Yeah, now that's some really warm light over here. I do indeed think we got some great pictures, so I'm very excited to start drawing. Two busts, two drawings. I don't think I've actually drawn in my drawing horse during a video. I use these for the figure drawing sessions, but it's a nice posture. We got this resting on my lap. It's this 45 degree angle. I quite enjoy this sort of drawing setup. And you're probably like, why are you looking at a uh, photo on your iPad when you got the busts right there? You can do a real life life drawing. Well, because I spent a lot of time controlling the light to take these nice punchy photos. I use these studio lights to sort of you know, get good shots of the drawing time lapse. And so it all be a little complicated. So it's just, this is kind of easier, a little more streamlined. I'm gonna use some willow charcoal just on some normal Strathmore, sort of Bristol paper, white paper. And uh, I'm really excited. Enough talking, more drawing. Willow charcoal, something I really like to be using these days in my figure drawing classes and just my personal work. I think it's sort of like a very expert level drawing utensil, not crystallizing, I'm an expert, but it's very challenging. But once you kind of get used to it and use it for its 
sort of properties like I just use it for these outlines because it's very forgiving you can just wipe it away it's extremely soft and you know that has its properties but um, I really like it and I really like this stage of the drawing especially on this big piece of paper just finding the outline using very linear lines straight lines and it's very like fun to me I don't know maybe it's just because I'm a meticulous person and you know within the sort of more academic realm of um, draftsmanship and drawing there's all these steps and stages to you know kind of find and you know if you follow them you, you have a high um, rate of success um, you know it's talking kind of mathematically and clinically but it's really fun so finding the outline finding the proportions with some key features and then putting in some value but I use that charcoal as much as I could and now kind of moving on um, to the next stage of the drawing to sort of render it out more I need different utensils so I got this Conte charcoal pencil which is more of just a proper pencil uh, charcoal where you can use some thicker lines and press harder into the paper. I also have this little smudger, which I really like using. It's kind of small for this drawing, so you'll see later I use a bigger smudging device, which is just a pan pastel, but um, because the charcoal is sitting so light on the paper, you know, you could get these really great effects and you're just looking, or I'm just looking for like a unification, a very smooth blend and values. You know, I'm, I'm capping myself at about two hours with this drawing, so it's nothing crazy rendered. You know, I kind of really, um, simplifying the hair and the beard but it's a statue you know it's a, it's a sculpture it's not a human so I want that really unified smooth look so I think this smudging affect is great and it looks wonderful I actually really like it it's extremely satisfying and then it's extremely satisfying to use this kneaded eraser to just pull back and subtract some of this really light airy um, charcoal that was smudged to bring out the highlights. Um, and this technique and this, this process is, I think my most familiar way of drawing, um, sort of adding and subtracting purposefully. And it was just a great, great two hours. I think this was two hours exactly. Uh, uh, just a wonderful time. And just, just in the zone, really enjoyed this charcoal sketch. Something I just want to talk about or just show, I actually drew Emperor Caracalla here on a trip to Italy in 2019. I was on a drawing program and they had this bust of the Emperor in the Colosseum. Now clearly I don't think it's the exact same as this head bust right here. I'm sure a lot of people sculpted this Emperor, but it's just hilarious that I already drew him. You know, you could kind of tell by the nose this drawing isn't super strong, only 25 minutes, but I like did a double take after I bought this and I picked you know this one out and I didn't remember until only a few days ago, so that's pretty funny. On to Saint Benedict. So drawing number two, I'm really in the zone here because I just did that other sketch and you know, I, I'm using the same technique because it's just so gosh darn fun, this willow charcoal. And immediately starting this, I knew that it was going to be much more challenging because there's not a lot of features to lock onto um, and shadow, like really defined shadow shapes. The beard is like half the length and it's a nebulous abstract shape and the hair and the forehead you know it's just all kind of like a blob besides the eye sockets nose and mouth so i was struggling in the beginning to kind of find the proportions and the likeness and i spent i think half of the time of this drawing which is a quicker drawing i think this is exactly an hour or like 58 minutes i know that just because i have the cameras rolling i could see how long i've been recording um, but the first like 25 minutes or 30 minutes, I was trying to find just that simple outline with the willow charcoal. And then again, just like the last drawing to move into more rendering, I, uh, I switch utensils and I, I'm, I'm filling in, solidifying some of those lines a little more with this, um, charcoal Conte pencil and, uh, and then sort of doing the first stage of smudging. Uh, I wish I could draw like this all the time. I don't know. Like there's something just about these utensils that I really, I don't know, just understand. You know, there's there's other things that I don't. Like I, I was going to do the second drawing with the toned gray paper. And that way I could use some white color pencil. 
um, to get really awesome highlight effects. But I feel like I'm really, you know, my grasp on using those two different values, like a, a you know, a, a normal graphite pencil and then a, a light white pencil. I'm not as keen to separate my va values. And I don't know, maybe I just get more confused on which to lean on more. But this is really fun. And I just, I don't know, I was just in the zone feeling good. And so overall, I wanted this um, face to be darker. So I'm just slightly, very lightly um, covering the face again with this charcoal so that I can go on it again with this smudger to generally lower, you know, generically lower the value just a little more um, sort of uh, unanimous, unanimously without, throughout this character. Um, and it's yeah, and so like I've laid out a roadmap and I'm talking very like academically and like mathematically and engineeringly because that's how I find success with drawings is this like sort of academic route. But, you know, I also just do my own thing and learn, try to learn myself. And it's all about just internalizing, you know, like there's a lot of amazing, uh, you know, you know, how to draw and all these amazing teachers, but it's more just about listening to people who are obviously awesome and successful at drawing, internalizing what they say and the fundamentals that they preach, and then sort of doing it a bunch on your own and internalizing it in your own way. I think that's, you know, easier said than done and pretty rational, but that's, I think, the best way to go about it. So I have my own, like, sort of practice and and, and situation and technique to, to find, you know, a drawing and a proportions and likenesses and whatever, but it's, it's really based in the academic world and that's my rant and that's that's it two awesome drawings from two amazing sculptures or um replication busts from the homie justin kendall i'll leave you with that um, check out more videos always coming every week see you in the next video so it's kind of actually